All right, well, uh, we'll get started here. Thanks for, for joining. Um, good afternoon, or I guess good morning, depending how late you went to bed last night. But uh, last day of reInvent, so we're, we're excited to be here. We're excited to talk about this solution. And um, we hope it to be interactive. We want there to be questions. Uh, there is a demo at the end where you get to play with the solution. And um, you know, our objective is for you to walk out of here saying, okay, I learned something new. This is pretty neat, and you know, maybe I can make it my own. Uh, one call out before we jump in, uh, everything you see is posted on GitHub, so you will be able to um, play with the solution afterwards. Uh, you can um, you know, use it, and uh, so you don't have to worry about taking pictures or anything like that. So before we jump in, uh, brief introductions. My name is Zach Barbetta. I'm a senior product manager on Amazon Pinpoint. Uh, we'll get into what Amazon Pinpoint is, and I'm joined by my colleague, Matt. Hey guys, yeah, Matt Dombrowski, I'm a solutions architect. Uh, AWS has been here about two and a half years, and um, I'm up in the Boston office in New England. Yeah, I'm in Seattle. Okay, great, so uh, what to expect from today's session? So this is the agenda. Uh, we're gonna talk about what exactly we're solving for. Uh, just a couple minutes there so we can set the stage, give you enough context. Uh, then we're gonna go into the uh, brief overview of the services being discussed. So again, uh, our assumption is that uh, the audience doesn't, isn't aware of the services we're talking about, so we wanna just make sure we level set with, with uh, what we're talking about and what those services can do. Then we're gonna walk through the architecture of this solution, uh, and then we're actually gonna do it. So we'll have a live demo. Uh, live demos are great. Uh, they work, and maybe we've slightly impressed you, and if they don't, then you'll certainly remember the session. Uh, last but not least, we'll do the audience demo, as Matt mentioned, and take a Q&A. Uh, that's really the most exciting part for us is to really hear your questions and for us to be able to um, you know, give you our, our opinions why we're, we're all here together. So what are we solving for today? Um, it's pretty simple, right? We are trying to, uh, or we have rather, developed a solution that enables you to be more uh, proactive engaging with your customers. And so what does that mean? Uh, well, we recognize that brands uh, uh, have uh, millions of contact points from customers all over different channels, right? Your customers are talking to you on Facebook, on Twitter, on Weibo, Line, all these different channels. So how can you be where your customers are? And, and it's not only important enough to be there, but how do you be there and then uh, interact with them in a, uh, in a manner that they expect? So the, the four themes here, um, and again, this is all intuitive, right? We all, we all receive notifications uh, every day, right? We're staring at our devices. Uh, in between every meeting, uh, in between every session. So what do we want, though, when these notifications come in, when brands try to engage with us? Well, of course, everything needs to be more personalized. Uh, that solution will uh, we'll demonstrate how we can do that today. Uh, we expect our experiences to be connected across devices. And so what I mean by that is if I interact with a brand on Facebook and then I go interact with them on Twitter, I expect them, the brand, to have an idea uh, of, of my interaction across the different channels so that I'm not having disjointed conversations. Um, we want from forms to natural, so what that means is we want it to be more of a conversation. We want the engagement to be bi-directional. Um, I'm a you know, firm believer, I think a lot about notifications, that notifications shouldn't just be a ping on your phone. It shouldn't just be an alert to grab your attention. It should be really offering me something valuable, and I should be able to determine what that, that value threshold is. Um, I think we all sort of see that trend towards uh, less screen time. Uh, less interaction with, with uh, our devices that are always trying to really hijack our brain and our attention. Uh, and then the last point is business context to user context. This is more just about understanding the broader profile of the customer, uh, who they are, what they like, what they're doing. Um, that's what I mean by user context. Um, so what is the solution? So these are hypothetical things that we're going to demonstrate today. So we're going to, uh, more or less, monitor a Facebook page that we've created. And we're gonna monitor this Facebook page because we wanna understand the, uh, what our customers are saying to us. And we're gonna use a variety of AWS services, but it's an ML-based solution, meaning that we're gonna leverage Amazon Comprehend to tell us what the customer is saying. So Amazon Comprehend, as we'll get into in a few slides, is gonna be able to tell us the intent of that post, the, the keywords, the sentiment. Is it positive, is it negative? And then that will let us interact with that customer. So these are just some hypothetical things that you could do with the solution, right? If you want to identify influencers or early adopters of your brands or products, you can do that with the metadata associated with the user's post. 
And so what I mean by that is, um, for example, this solution is extensible not just from Facebook, but really any channel. So if you were to do this on Twitter, you can capture the metadata associated with the user. How many followers do they have? How many retweets did their tweet get? Um, you know, anything that they make public, you can incorporate and in, in understand. So that might be you know, important for brands that want to make sure their influencers are, are appropriately acknowledged. Um, there's other real-time engagement solution, or real-time engagement use cases as well. So if there's a, a flash sale or a big promotion or you know, some sort of uh, uh, event that is, needs to be um, engaging with the users in real time, this can help you do that. And then, of course, there's you know, a variety. There's, the, I think what's exciting about the solution is you can make it what you want, and you can develop any of these, um, these offers and these engagements. So concessions to unhappy customers. Um, for example, if there's a flight delay and you want to proactively interact with everyone at that gate, um, you know, how do you do that? So now we're going to talk a little bit about the AWS services that are part of this solution. Uh, first, we're going to talk about Amazon Pinpoint. So Amazon Pinpoint is a relatively new solution. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, I'll, I'll kind of give you the five components of the service so you have a good understanding of what Pinpoint does and how it plays a role in this solution. So first, Pinpoint helps you collect the data, um, collect device data specifically. So what device are your users using? Uh, where are they using it from? Uh, what is the uh, metadata associated with those devices? Uh, second, it collects the event data. So now that you know about your customers and where they're or what devices they're using, uh, what are they doing on those devices? So how long are they on a web page? Uh, what is um, the funnel look like for conversion? Uh, what are they clicking on? Where are they falling out? Um, you know, all that event data. That's that's really important because Pinpoint captures that, uh, presents it to you in, in a very user-friendly way, and then lets you target on, on that data. So that's the third component of Pinpoint is there's a suite of segmentation tools that let you use all the data you're capturing to really take your audience and slice and dice it into the segments that you want. Of course, after segmentation, um, you want to build more customer characteristics and preferences and then engage with the user with a notification. So Pinpoint doesn't do just push SMS or email. Uh, earlier, I talked about being where your customers are, so Pinpoint also su uh, supports the ability for you to engage uh, with your own channel. Uh, and what I mean by that is there's uh, the ability to call a Lambda function and Lambda can then deliver a payload to a destination which could be any channel you've defined. So that's Amazon Pinpoint and we'll show you uh, how that plays into this solution. And there's another service that Matt will talk about. Awesome, thanks, Zach. So um, I'm going to talk quickly about Comprehend. Um, I don't want to make you know the whole talk about Comprehend because after Andy's announcements yesterday, Comprehend's like almost old news already. So sentiment analysis is like that's easy, that's solve problem. Um, NLP, easy stuff. Um, but Comprehend uh, is actually very powerful. Um, the great thing about Comprehend is uh, you can. Without ever provisioning a single server, um, you can do very, very powerful natural language processing. So uh, you basically just throw unstructured text uh, at Comprehend. It's, um, it takes the input. Um, and as the name implies, uh, Comprehend will um, automatically extract things like key phrases, uh, entities, sentiment, language, topics. So um, if you go into the AWS console with Comprehend, there's an example where you know, we show a blurb about Amazon.com. It might be from like Wikipedia or something. It understands like the entities in there that Amazon.com is a business, um, key phrases, dates, things like that. Um, and we're using Comprehend in this solution. Um, you'll see to understand the sentiment of what users are saying on social media. So, um, and it's really easy to get started. It's an API call, like I said. So there's like a detect sentiment API, um, one call. Uh, you give it, again, unstructured text, just a sentence from um, you know, a user posting on social media. You get back uh, confidence scores um, in terms of positive, negative, uh, neutral sentiment, and then kind of an overall score into what uh, Comprehend thinks that sentiment is and uh, what its confidence is overall. Um, so you'll see that. And then, uh, so it doesn't just do sentiment analysis, but that's what we're using it for today. Um, and again, without ever kind of uh, having to have a PhD in machine learning, uh, really easy to use for developers. So really democratizing access to a very powerful AI services for developers. Um, and I think it's Comprehend's one year birthday, uh, maybe even today. Um, 
Uh, but I, I think sure. what we like about Comprehend is it, it scales um, as you need it. So what I mean by that is when Matt and I were building the, the solution and playing around with it, we, we originally built it on Twitter. So we were able to ingest millions of tweets with the solution. Comprehend was able to score all of those in real time. And I guess the call out there is that you know, if there's a, a, an event, um, you know, I think back to the Super Bowl a couple years ago where I think it was Oreos had the dunk in the dark uh, tweet when there was a blackout. You know, if there's an event where all of a sudden your channels light up and you have to engage with your customers or you want to, uh, Comprehend in this solution supports that. Yeah, and kind of preparing for this talk, I was reading about uh, large social media events and I saw an example of a company in Japan that there was some kind of promotion or sale that went uh, viral uh, through the whole country and there were like four million tweets to this company within 24 hours. And if you can imagine, um, the benefit here is uh, Brands don't have uh, you know money or headcount to staff large social media teams and to think about you know responding to or attempting to respond to four million um, tweets. It's not going to happen individually or in a personalized way like you know evolving consumers expect. So um, with uh, architecture, we're going to walk through. Um, this is kind of a solution and a reference architecture we developed um, for customers to use and um, companies and brands to do. Again, sentiment analysis uh, on social media then, but not only, because there's a lot of solutions out there that do just social media sentiment analysis. Um, and you know they're expensive, they uh, maybe have a multi-year lock-in, um, so these companies you know, want you to um, sign a multi-year agreement. Um, and you know, they're not extensible, it's kind of a black box. Uh, you can't do what you want. You can't plug in, you know, personalized was announced yesterday by Andy, you can't um, plug in a new service uh, in place of Comprehend here. Um, so not as extensible. So with this, you kind of get a solution um, with the AWS kind of building blocks. Um, and, you know, it's not just this one static thing. You could, if you want, um, like Zach mentioned, it doesn't have to be Facebook. It could be Twitter. Um, it could be Instagram. Um, and the channel that we're sending over doesn't have to be push notifications. It could be, um, you know, voice. Uh, it could be a chat experience. It doesn't have to be even a uh, Facebook message or social media. It could be, you know, someone messaging you on WhatsApp. Uh, we had a customer that yesterday that came up to us talking about WhatsApp. Could this be used for WhatsApp? Like, absolutely. Um, could be Facebook messages. So there's a lot um, that you could plug in here. Um, but the way that this works, if you look at um, Number one, there's, uh, you can imagine, um, lots of companies out there have, uh, you know, a corporate or brand mobile app um, or web app, and they use Facebook uh, or social sign-in. So it could be Facebook, Google, uh, Twitter, Amazon uh, sign-in even. So you have, you know, the Facebook sign-in button on your website because you don't want people to create yet another username and password. Um, and when that happens, um, you get back uh, kind of the Facebook user ID. And we use that and register um, an endpoint in Pinpoint. And what that does is uh, let's Pinpoint know that uh, this push, and then uh, you also allow push notifications, and you'll see that in the demo. Um, and when you do that, you get back a push device token, and when you log into Facebook, you get a user ID. So we use these two things, send them to Pinpoint. So Pinpoint knows you know, this push or device token is uh, this Facebook ID, and then later on um, in number three there, maybe the user um, is angry because they're posting on a um, airline's uh, Facebook page and they got a, they had a flight delay. Um, and maybe they're angry and they post on their page, um, you know, hey, I'm really angry about this flight, flight delay. What's going on? Um, when they do that, uh, if you see in number four there, there's a web hook. Um, so there's a Facebook app that subscribes uh, to the page feed and fires off a web hook to. Um, your back end, which is kind of like the right half of the screen from API Gateway over. Um, and that's all, of course, your back end on AWS. Um, and like Zach mentioned, there's a GitHub page, and all this can be launched pretty easily in a CloudFormation template in 15 minutes. And we did a workshop on Monday where uh, we had you know, 140 people or something, and they all did the lab, and it all worked, um, which was great. And so it's pretty easy to get started, launch all this, um, set it up, and um, so from the API gateway, that uh, API gets invoked by the Facebook page. So Facebook fires off a webhook, um, basically event-based um, HTTP webhook saying, you know, this person updated this Facebook page. Uh, so the feed's updated, fire off this webhook, um, API gateway. 
um, is called. So there's a route, you know, like slash webhooks or something um, with uh, an API gateway, and that invokes a Lambda function behind it. So the Lambda function says, um, in number five there, uh, call comprehend, uh, detect sentiment on that. So you get from Facebook, you know, a bunch of metadata about the user that posted, timestamps, things like that, and then um, the actual message of the post. Um, so Lambda forwards that on to comprehend, um, gets back a uh, sentiment score, uh, and this is all very fast, very low latency. Um, you'd be surprised how fast, you know, comprehend can return sentiment. And then uh, takes that uh, sentiment and decides, you know, if it's positive in this case, um, send out a push notification with pinpoint. Um, and for all records, uh, those are persisted for archival later. So um, if you see number six there, um, sends uh, that message to Kinesis stream, and that record um, using Firehose is um, persisted for long-term long archival to S3. Um, so it creates an object there, and once it's in S3, you really have a lot of flexibility in terms of loading it into like um, a data warehouse like Redshift or using Athena to write queries against it. Um, and then also uh, indexes that message in Elasticsearch. So uh, with Elasticsearch, the benefit there is you get full text search and visualization um, with Kibana built in, so you can um, build cool visualizations, use plugins. Um, there's a lot of open source uh, visualization um, tools out there, so, um, and you'll see that in the demo as well. So you really get um, near real time social media analysis, but not only that, the ability to you know, act on that and reach out and touch the user. Um, and then long term archival for um, downstream analytics, which is great. So Matt, if you'd stay here for a quick second. So yep. in sort of what we're doing here from left to right, it's really three major things that we, we discussed earlier. First, we're building that profile. So steps one, two, three. Building the profile on the user. So who is this user? Okay, we know now because they've authenticated with a social sign in Facebook. What are the attributes for that user? Well, Facebook provides a lot of that information for us. What are their interests? What pages do they like? Um, you know, what are their friends lists, right? That's, you've all seen that when you've authenticated with an app and it says, by authenticating, you're giving permission to, and then it usually lists. So that's one, is building that profile. Then two, in the middle part, and this is a solution that, that Matt built, so um, you, you don't have to worry about building this yourself, but that's really the monitoring component of this social sentiment. So let's monitor a certain Facebook page or a Twitter feed to really understand what people are saying. And that's where Comprehend comes in, Kinesis helps us, so it's a, this process of understanding. And then the third part, is the actual engagement. So now that you know the user, you know what they're saying, let's engage dependent on certain uh, criteria that you've set. Yeah, and we should also mention in this architecture, like um, point number seven there, step seven, is updating the endpoint in pinpoint. So you know that this user you know, is your promoter or your detractor. So in the long term, I know, you know this guy had a really bad experience, this guy or girl um, had a really bad experience with my brand. Um, maybe I want to do something like offer a promotion, or maybe they're a promoter and I want to invite them to join you know, our influencers or loyalty club, or send them free swag, um, or you know, get them to uh, share stuff to their followers on social media. So, um, and then another point here, like in the demo, you'll see a push notification and it's real time, but um, that would be pretty creepy you know, if you posted something on Facebook and immediately uh, the brand's like, hey, sorry, you had a bad experience. Uh, I'm in your face. Um, so in, you know, in the real world, you're probably doing something like with marketing automation on the right you see there um, for Pinpoint. Um, you probably have a daily or weekly you know, recurring campaign. And in that campaign, maybe you're messaging your influencers and saying, um, hey, here's a new um, thing, new and cool thing. Why don't you share it with your followers? Or um, you know, join our loyalty club to get free swag. Or um, yeah, the possibilities are kind of endless. Um, so I, I also wanted to walk through some of the components here in the architecture and why I chose those. Um, so firstly, the web and mobile app that you saw is a React um, progressive web app, and that's um, really the reason for that is uh, ability to work across many platforms, kind of develop once and run um, you know, on mobile web, on web. Um, and we did this for a workshop too, and it worked uh, really well in that scenario, um, but it could be, it doesn't have to be React um, progressive web app, it could be you know, enabled, a native mobile app, um, it could be a web app, 
um, like desktop web. Um, so a lot of um, options there. Uh, to actually build out the um, front end, we use AWS Amplify, which is um, a library and CLI and tool chain to um, have your uh, JavaScript applications and JavaScript front end, uh, but also native iOS, Android apps, um, be able to, for your developers, front end and mobile developers, to kind of work on, focus on their apps and not kind of care about the AWS back end. So Amplify to build um, that connection between the cloud and your front end. Um, of course, a Facebook app and a webhook to notify our back end that um, a change or a uh, post is happening in real time. Uh, API Gateway is an API, um, and that's just the ability to receive Facebook updates in a public endpoint that Facebook can connect to. Uh, and that also uh, serves to invoke a Lambda function, and Lambda um, you know, has been around for since 2014. Um, I think in beta 2015 went GA, and um, Lambda obviously is super popular with customers, and saw a lot of cool stuff with Lambda this morning in Werner's keynote. Um, but with Lambda, um, if you're not familiar yet, um, is serverless compute. So with Lambda, you can write um, code. And in this Lambda function, this solution, we basically call in Comprehend and call in Kinesis to persist the record. Um, but you can do kind of any business logic within that Lambda function without having to worry about you know, running and operating servers. So again, allowing your developers to write code and not um, worry about running servers. Um, Kinesis is a streaming data processing service. So Kinesis in this kind of architecture here um, is to ingest um, data, uh, very low latency, very uh, high scale. Um, so Kinesis allows us to do streaming data processing. And the idea here you know, is if you get a spike of thousands or millions of tweets or Facebook posts, um, Kinesis can handle that um, with ease. And then S3 uh, for raw data archival and a data lake. Um, like I mentioned before, S3 is very uh, nearly infinitely scalable, um, but also uh, is deeply integrated with a lot of other AWS services. So um, if you think about S3, you can, like I mentioned, load data into Redshift, um, query it with Athena. You have a lot of flexibility, um, fire off another Lambda function. So once it's in S3, um, you really that, use that kind of as your data lake and um, use the data as you wish once it's there. Um, so a lot of support for S3. And then Elasticsearch, um, if you're not familiar, there's a full text search engine. Um, a lot of visibility, uh, visualization and options there as well. Um, Comprehend, of course, for uh, text comprehension and sentiment analysis. And then Pinpoint, um, as Zach discussed in depth, um, for mobile engagement, in this case, uh, push notifications. But Pinpoint also supports email, SMS, um, and you can extend it with other channels, too. So don't think about this solution just in terms of push. Um, Really, however you engage with your customers and your users, um, you can do that through Pinpoint um, and Pinpoint extensions, actually. Um, so some advantages here. Um, I mentioned if there's like a spike in traffic, spike in social media activity, uh, this will scale to meet demand. Um, and again, it's serverless, so there's low operational burden. Um, so you don't have to, again, your developers don't have to worry about patching and updating servers and securing servers. Um, no data wrangling, these uh, APIs can be pretty complex, so we already kind of built out the uh, boilerplate code for you to parse those APIs and um, consume those APIs. Um, and then the real-time marketing component, I think, is really the differentiator where, um, like I mentioned, there's a lot of solutions out there that do social media sentiment analysis and even open source libraries, but not a lot go the extra mile and actually allow you to you know, reach out and, um, yeah, reach out to your users and customers. Um, did you want to talk, anything to add, Zach? Yeah, so I mean, I think the advantage to the solution here is that um, as Matt highlighted on the previous slide, there's a lot of services that are involved here, but we've abstracted that away to make it easier for you and, and then ultimately for your teams that you're supporting that want this capability. And so as, as we'll show you here in the demo, um, you can start to, to really see how the, the power of this when you're proactively uh, and programmatically engaging with a user based on what they're saying. So. No, that's, all, that's all I had to add. Let's, uh, let's see the cool. demo and let's yeah. take questions. Uh, low cost as well, I would add while I'm setting up, um, that the cost kind of scales with um, usage, as is the case with a lot of AWS services. So in the demo, uh, I should probably get out of PowerPoint here. 
So I asked if anyone was, when is in this session on Monday uh, so I can make the same jokes and the same joke I'm going to make again. But uh, it's always fun doing a live demo, and especially one where you have to have notifications enabled. So I told my wife, um, you know, don't text me for the next hour or so, hopefully. Uh, so we'll see if I get any baby pics or not. Um, but so let's go into the demo. I have a um, mobile app here, um, mobile web app. So if you look at the architecture, kind of, um, again, this is where we start with the mobile or web client. Um, and I have Facebook login implemented here, with just a login with Facebook button. So I can choose this. Um, I'm already kind of signed in in my browser, but if I wasn't, um, you would see kind of a Facebook login prompt. I put in my username and password. Um, I allow permissions. Can you zoom in on some of the metadata that we're collecting yeah. uh, with the authentication Absolutely. with Facebook? So in this example here, this would be your authentication, uh, your brand's website. When you're asking a user to sign up, yep. instead of them creating a username and password, this would just be the, the opportunity for them to log in with Facebook or Twitter or Gmail or Amazon. Yeah, this is where they use like social sign-in. Yep. Um, and then uh, at the bottom, you can see you know um, metadata about me, you know my picture, my Facebook ID. And that's what we use to send, um, uh, update the endpoint and pinpoint. Uh, and then there's also a click to receive notifications. Um, if I uh, didn't already ask uh, or give permission, this would prompt me to say, you know, do you allow this website? Like you might get on some um, annoying sites out there, like do you want to message, uh, do you want to allow push notifications from some site you've never heard of? Um, but hopefully uh, they allow it in this case and they like your brand. Um, so then from there, you know, Pinpoint, um, which is our, again, messaging, targeting service and analytics service, knows uh, who the user ID is on Facebook, what their um, device token, push device token is. And then uh, later, if I go to, for example, here, and this is what we'll um, have in kind of like an audience participation. Uh, later, if you go to uh, this great, um, well-designed Facebook page uh, for Pinpoint Airlines, um, you know, if I post on this page um, as myself, I can say, you know, what a great demo, Matt and Zach. Just me, actually. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Uh, I love Pinpoint Airlines. <clears throat> and we'll post, and hopefully within a couple seconds, I get a push notification. And yeah, it's right there. So thank you very much. This asked me to like complete a survey. Um, so um, this is kind of just a demonstration of this all. And you saw that was you know probably a second and a half, two seconds to d go through um, this whole thing, do some pretty complicated sentiment analysis, um, and then I can kind of follow this through um, the architecture. So for API Gateway, you'll see the API um, getting invoked here. Um, and this is all live, um, so you can see, you know, at 11.19 and um, at 12.30, um, getting invoked. Um, and then in that API Gateway is getting called. Uh, this Lambda function is getting invoked by API Gateway, and you can see kind of invocations happening here. Um, but also, if I go to CloudWatch to look at the logs for the Lambda function, and if we zoom in here, I know that's small, and scroll down to just now, um, 2043 uh, UTC, I can see, um, if we can see that. The positive sentiment score, so you can see down here, um, Comprehend thinks with 99% confidence this is positive, and it breaks it down to into negative and neutral, but the overall sentiment's positive. Um, and I can scroll down a bit further and see um, the actual uh, messaging and metadata um, about the score. Um, and then the response from Pinpoint as well, saying, you know, my delivery was successful, which is great. And then with Kinesis, um, I can scroll down and, again, kind of just like serially going through uh, the data flow here. So Lambda called Comprehend, got a response back. Um, forwarded the message um, to Kinesis for streaming ingestion, so I can see um, the put records here. Um, and then there's a Kinesis Firehose, and if you're not familiar with Firehose, um, it's basically a service to ingest data.
from a streaming source like a Kinesis stream and um, persist that data in either S3 or Elasticsearch um, or Redshift as well. So with Firehose, we're kind of forking um, here. Uh, so long-term archival with S3 and then Elasticsearch for search and visualization. So with Elasticsearch, uh, I'll show S3 first so you can see 2018, November 29th is today, this morning. Um, so you can see objects being created, and that's by Kinesis Firehose, and this is me testing um, before, but if I download this object, you know, you'll see um, exactly what's in there. Um, if I was to download that and show it. Um, and then with Elasticsearch, um, I'm actually indexing, um, again, in near real time, um, this data as it flows in from Facebook. So uh, if I click on Kibana, um, I can see, you know, um, tweets or in this case Facebook posts coming in. I can, you know, build visualizations like a tag cloud or word cloud here, uh, time series analysis. I can see uh, raw logs coming in. Um, I can do full text search. Um, so I can see, you know, this is a great presentation. Awesome job, Zach and Matt. Um, so. Um, thank you for that, appreciate it. Um, and the, also the other thing is uh, not just the real time aspect and the analytics aspect, but um, the segmentation and targeting is really important as well. So in Pinpoint, I actually up, we update the um, endpoint ID with the sentiment score. Um, so you can actually build a segment um, and your marketing folks don't have to you know, live in the code and be writing code, they can you know, do what marketers do best is run really engaging campaigns. Um, so they can write campaigns, build segments. And if I create a segment here um, and just give it some name, um, I can add a filter on this segment and filter it by user and use the user attribute of sentiment and have some you know, users that are positive, some that are neutral. Um, and maybe I want to create a campaign that reaches out to this segment every week and says, for my positive users, let's some the, send them a push um, to you know get them to subscribe to our loyalty club or what have you, um, and um, you know I can do the opposite for people that had negative experiences. Maybe reach out with a coupon code or offer um, to kind of offer a concession for their bad experience. And I think the one call out here is um, Pinpoint gives you the tools to set up some of the marketing automation to um, have this scheduled campaign go out to a dynamic segment on any any time series that, that you define. So what I mean by that is if every morning you wanted to send a campaign to customers that had a negative experience, those customers would be different each day uh, and you could only target them a certain number of times depending on what, what you wanted. So it's a good way for you to enable uh, data collection on customers that had certain experiences in an automated, uh, automated fashion. Yeah, and Pinpoint comes with a lot of um, you know, functionality that you might expect from a marketing automation or marketing tool like A-B testing and uh, testing both like the content or copy of a message as well as the schedule. So you, know, you can A-B test that schedule and see what works um, for users. Um, and yeah, a lot of fine grained control over schedule and um, yeah, silent times and all those kind of things. Um, so that's it for the demo. Um, and then I want you guys to interact with us too. So. Audience participation, if you have your phone um, out, if you could go to this URL, it should take you to Facebook, or if you have your laptop up, um, go to this URL. Like I mentioned uh, before we started recording, post something on the Facebook page, preferably it's positive. Um, and um, it, like I said, we're being recorded, so hopefully say something funny, but not too funny. Um, and we'll highlight the comprehensive sentiment score on stage. Highest sentiment score, we'll send out an echo dot to you guys and reach out on Facebook. So go to that URL if you can. It should take you to um, that fabulous Facebook page for Finpoint Airlines um, and just post on that page and uh, we'll go through your sentiment scores and see what we get.
that big enough? Can people read that? It's tiny URL slash YBC MYRD5. So if I click that and exit out of this, it will take me to this Facebook page um, for Pinpoint Airlines and just post on there and say, you know, Matt and Zach, you rock. Um, great demo. Let's see what some people are saying. And yeah, you can see kind of event notifications popping up at Facebook, but those are also firing off web hooks to my API. Sweet session, loving this demo and solution. Looking forward to using it. Uh, this is a brilliant idea. Oh, questions. Yeah, you can submit questions through here. That'd be cool. Uh, is there any tutorial for Pinpoint? Zach, that's a question for you, I think. Yes, there is. I can get you that information, whoever asked that. Your coffee is really yummy. <laughs> Uh, so let's, let's see the sentiment scores on this. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what Comprehend thinks, and then, so this is sort of where you would customize the Lambda function to tell Pinpoint what to exactly to do based on the sentiment score of these notifications. So we'll see as these come in in real time, what are what does uh, Comprehend believe the sentiment to be? Yep. So someone said, "Great demo. Wish all airlines would be able to engage this way." Me too. Uh, whatever your name is, Lauren Lacey. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, positive with a 90% confidence, um, neutral point, yeah, two, two and a half percent confidence that it was neutral. Um, so 90% positive score, pretty good. Uh, let's see what else we got. So we have, uh, who is this? This is a brilliant idea. Is there any tutorial for Pinpoint? Great presentation, by the way. I like that you added the last part with great because that got the score up to 99.66. Uh, so that's awesome. So 99.66 is the score to beat. Uh, if everyone does this, I won't like belabor this and go through everything. So offline, we can uh, uh, send out the echo dot to the yeah. winner here. Let's do one more, then we can take questions since we're running tight yeah, of time. Yeah, let's do another. Uh, so let's see what this person said. This person, uh, who's this person? Courtney. Um, what did she say? Um, sweet, session. sweet session. Loving this demo and solution. Looking forward to using it. Same. I'm looking forward to using it. 92.8% uh, positive. Pretty good. Try again, Courtney. <laughs> but yeah, awesome stuff. Um, yeah, thanks for participating. So I'm glad it worked, by the way. Uh, <laughs> So yeah. yeah, with that, let's open up to any questions, and uh, we can all stay out uh, after if there's additional follow-ups. Yeah, and we'll leave this up to watch people's fun stuff come in. Questions? Yeah, please. And yeah, if you guys can either get up or line up behind the mics for questions uh, so everyone can hear them. Yeah, great question. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there, again, I mentioned like extensibility. Um, and one of the things I like about this is that, um, you know, you're not just beholden to the features of some um, third party vendor provider. Um, and, you know, you are beholden to their roadmap and, you know, you can ask as much as you want, but you can also implement language support. So in this case, you could do something like, um, within that Lambda function, instead of calling Comprehend directly, Comprehend does support a number of languages. I'm not sure off the top of my head what they are, but um, if it didn't support a language um, that you wanted, maybe a different service like um, AWS Translate, so maybe you call Translate with your language pair from, you know, whatever it might be, um, some unsupported language like, I don't know, Swahili to um, English, and then comprehend um, and then get the sentiment. So I think that's um, the beauty of what AWS is doing with these higher level, higher order AI services is, you know, there's a bunch of APIs and developers can kind of call them, you know, as they would call any service and uh, it's really easy to kind of plug and play them together. Does that answer the question? Um, cool. Others?
Yeah. Um, so the question, if you didn't hear it, was um, how would you connect this to Instagram comments? Um, and you now if I go back to the architecture diagram, this doesn't have to be Facebook. Um, Instagram also, I was thinking about doing um, a demo of Instagram for this. And Instagram also is, of course, owned by Facebook. And um, just like Facebook, you can create an Instagram um, I think it's called an Instagram page or Facebook page uh, with Instagram support. And um, for Instagram, you can also create webhooks. Um, I believe it's for comments specifically. So if you go to the Instagram API docs, um, the same exact way. But um, the part I would have to do some research on is knowing if you could use like that Instagram ID and the Facebook sign-in um, together. So yeah, we should talk offline about that. Um, so I think in most cases, I'm not sure, but do you use your same Instagram and Facebook password? You don't? OK. Or I don't know if you can. Yeah, you have the option, too. So some people may choose to and some may not. Um, I don't know the extent that Facebook kind of unifies those users, because um, that becomes a tough problem at like, their scale, especially. Um, but yeah, so I wouldn't, so yeah, let's do some research offline for sure. But uh, the webhook stuff is supported as well. So. The question right there. Oh, are the hooks there for Amazon product reviews? So you have a product like in the Amazon Marketplace um, and the Amazon.com like retail marketplace, and you want to say for product reviews, um, yeah. So you could. Uh, I don't know that the uh, Amazon Marketplace supports you know event based or webhooks, um, I would have to look into that. But um, we do have Amazon sign-in, so you could uh, potentially like use sign-in in your page, get that user ID, um, and then connect that with um, product reviews and see if you could grab like the user metadata from that product review. So um, yeah, I don't know the extent to which um, the retail business supports webhooks, but that's super interesting. I, th I also think Comprehend was developed from like product review training data. So that's like a perfect use case there. Because um, we did train Comprehend on you know, those millions of product reviews. So um, it, really, it does really well on, of course, e-commerce data. Um, so um, yeah, great use case there. Other questions? Can you detect sarcastic posts? I have probably been asked that like half a dozen times um, and haven't looked it up yet. Um, comprehend, I don't know the extent to which like if you say, um, I don't know an example, but you know, if you were complaining in a sarcastic way, uh, if Comprehend has you know, the training and intelligence to do that, um, that would depend on yeah, Comprehend's ability to support like sarcasm and colloquialisms and things like that. Um, yeah, I don't know off the top of my head, but we can look. Uh, and if Comprehend doesn't, like I said, extensibility, extensibility, extensibility. Um, and if Comprehend doesn't, like train your own model with SageMaker or something, we're making it even easier to um, do that. And um, yeah, train your own model and um, use a SageMaker inference endpoint or something to um, get that response back. So. Um, if Comprehend doesn't, we'll find another way for sure. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. guys. Let's Thanks, everyone. Yeah, wrap it up.